So Jules, um, one of the things users want to know is how is uh, rendering in the cloud fundamentally different from rendering on a client PC? And the corollary to that is many of these are enthusiasts. They ask, why won't I wind up running a piece of the cloud potentially on my own PC and then extending that to my friends such that they could game on the cloud that I'm ultimately running on my hardware and extending to end users? If you, have, uh, if you have the same generation of hardware that we're using for the cloud, that then which is currently R700 or Radeon 4800 or newer, you could potentially connect yourself to the cloud and actually extend it and be on the edge of that. There's a lot of stuff going into the hardware in the cloud that is very efficient for scaling to tens of thousands of users. That so one single PC without that kind of internet connectivity between those thousands of GPUs won't be able to do. But that doesn't mean that we still can't use the, uh, you know, the GPUs and the client to actually rebroadcast cloud streams to other users. That is absolutely possible, but that's a later phase. And the other thing is, I mean, I guess part of AMD's um, other drivers, uh, you know, at some point we're going to be putting pieces of the Otoy software that enable you to actually get HD streams that are decoded on the GPU. That same GPU can then re-encode them and stream it to other users that either have GPUs or don't, so you can extend the cloud that way. That's definitely a possibility. Great. Um, another question that they've had is GPU, GPGPU technology obviously needs to advance in order for you to be able to deploy these very sophisticated ways of rendering on the cloud, encoding to video, and then getting that to a client. Could you discuss maybe some of the, the technology gaps or problems that remain to be solved that you may be trying to solve in order to bridge those gaps and ultimately deliver on the business? Sure. Well, one of the things we're going to be showing at GDC, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks, is uh, that we're using Cal pretty heavily to do a lot of our, our a lot of the compression work, which is necessary in order to match, you know, and we're talking about thousands and thousands of simultaneous streams, uh, that, you know, the GPUs need to be fully taxed, and there's no way to do that necessarily through Direct3D. Uh, OpenCL is, is an emerging standard, which is very exciting. It's going to sort of bring, I think, GPU computing capability to, to the masses, and in the meantime, we've got, we've got Cal, uh, you know, on AV hardware that allows us to get there, you know, at a very low level, but still allows us to really test everything and, and implement it. So we actually have implemented GPU-based compression on R700 and higher and newer hardware, it works amazingly well. I mean, the difference between what you can do on a, on a GPU versus a, even a quad four CPU is three orders of magnitude. I mean, we're seeing hundreds of times in, of increase in speed, uh, maybe even a thousand times in certain cases, really complex compression that is entirely our codec, like our wavelet-based codec. So I think that's really where GPU is going to is going to be an important factor of cloud-based computing. And we're, you know, with AMD's help, I mean, we're really getting Cal to sort of you know, serve as, as that toolkit now. But we're obviously, like everyone else, we're looking for to OpenCL being the standard by which we develop uh, going forward, you know, for the next generation of GPUs and beyond. Wow, so a couple more questions. This is great. So uh, one of the questions people have is, how does the processing chain that you have to run video to uh, through relate to, say, DirectX 10 and DirectX 11 and potentially other tool sets that you'll need to deploy? Are you able to live within some of those confines, leverage a lot of that development? How much do you have to do that's above and beyond uh, where, say, DirectX is headed? I think that with DirectX 11, we're going to see compute shaders that will be similar in functionality to what you can do with OpenCL, so that's just another option for us. Um, OpenCL is going to be available to us first, so we're probably going to start with that, but yeah, as soon as we get really a working uh, a working system to test DirectX 11 compute shaders, we're obviously going to be exploiting that. Cloud side, for applications that are going to be posted on the Fusion Render Cloud, we'll support DirectX 11 apps, so it'll be virtualized, so you can make a game that's fully compliant with DirectX 11, uses compute shaders, and can run on the cloud to be streamed to any client. So you don't have to wait for clients to have DX11 hardware to deploy DX11 games. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, as far as, uh, you know, as far as you utilizing DirectX itself, I mean, you know, our engine, the things that you see in Rendered in Otoy are actually running in DirectX 90X. Um, we're, we're actually looking at DX10 support, but probably going to skip directly to DX11, just because that kind of satisfies our requirements, uh, you know, in, in a sense, better than, uh, you know, than DX10 does. I mean, the reason why we do DX9 and it's spend so much time on it is we want to be able to take existing DX9 content, even from XP, and essentially virtualize that, run it through Otoy, and stream it through the, uh, through the cloud. And every game that's out there supports DX9 as a baseline standard, pretty much. So that's why we put so much effort and work on that. And uh, and then as we started offering the cloud as an actual deployment platform for game developers, uh, DX11 actually is kind of, there's no reason to go any less than that. So that's sort of how we're looking at integrating those things with, uh, with Otoy and the FRC. So um, a lot of users 
are thinking about latency in gaming. A lot of gamers who are playing these games are thinking, you know, from the perspective of, I've got a high-end gaming desktop today, I may be playing a multiplayer game, there may be latencies involved in generating that real-world content online and beaming it back to me. Could you explain a little bit about, you know, how you see latency being problematic or potentially solved? And also, can you explain a little bit more about what exactly needs to be on my client in order for me to have this experience? Well, I think that you, you're, we're, we're looking at two very different kinds of clients. There's there's the 100 million users out there that just are casual gamers or casual users that don't have uh, high-end hardware and just have a, you know, maybe they have a netbook, and maybe they have a very old PC. The kind of stuff you're seeing here, all the stuff that we've been showing here at, and that we showed at CES is running on Firefox with, with nothing, right? I mean, this is, a, you know, or IE or any other browser. And that is streaming, that requires nothing on the client. I mean, literally, you can stream from an iPhone that, that just comes with Safari. And that's our lowest common denominator, and that requires requires basically nothing on the client other than a web browser. Uh, we also have clients for Java and Flash, and uh, you know we have an executable that can, you know, it's 200K that can connect you to the cloud. But there's something that's a little more interesting, and that's a, that's a level above that, and that's very interesting for gamers in particular, where we have a plugin that's also at a couple hundred K that has a high-end codec, and that allows us to stream GPU on the, on the cloud to GPU on the client and decode really complex data, not just necessarily a frame buffer, but stuff that actually allows you to really get cloud-based rendering to work at, 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 at not only 1920 by 1080, but 2560 by 1600, or 4K by 2K, and it's limited only by bandwidth. And even then, we can lower the quality, and if you have lower, a low bandwidth connection, we can get you, you know, 2560 by 1600, you know, on a 10 megabit connection. And it's literally a question of resolution, scale, and quality. But since we're encoding live every frame, we can change the size, I and mean, the end users can adjust, you know, the quality settings, just like they can do in an existing game. When you want to run Crisis at 2560 by 1600, you go to the Options menu, and you set the reset the resolution, you can do the same thing on the cloud, and that not just adjusts the quality of the game, but it adjusts the quality of your stream. And we can have Hotkeys that do the same thing live as you're playing it. Um, so that late in, and, you know that deals a little bit with the bandwidth issues, you know, scalability. We uh, the FRC is able to scale so high that the limiting factor is mainly just bandwidth. Um,